communicating bad news, your mom will die soon. There is not just one specific, only perfect way to do things. Everyone does things different. But we need to have an idea about how we'll want to do it before we do it. As we watch the video, let's consider the following. First, let's orient ourselves quickly by asking, what is happening? And then we ask, what was done well? What will I do? What can be improved? What will I do different? And then we ask, what are the emotional, the existential, spiritual, psychosocial issues? Good communication can only happen if we have understanding and empathy. In this video, the provider, the nurse, had visited the mom the day before. She noted findings that would indicate that the mom will probably die soon. And so she tells the other provider, the doctor, and they both visited the house again the next day to tell the daughter the bad news, which is, your mom will die soon. The two providers are with the daughter and the dying mom. They examine the mom first. They describe the mom, her pulse, her breathing, while the daughter listens, a little anxious and concerned. The two providers could have just looked at the mom and examined her for a few seconds, especially if it was pretty obvious that the mom was imminently dying. The nurse had already examined the mom the day before, and the findings were clearly pointing in that direction. However, however, by examining the mom first, the daughter feels that the two providers actually respects her mom and really cares for her, and she can trust them. She knows she needs a lot of help, and she feels she can really count on them. As she listens to the provider describe her mom, the pulse, the breathing, the circulation, she gradually begins to think, does this mean my mom is actually dying? She gradually prepares herself for the possible bad news. They then go to the living room with the daughter comfortably seated. It is also possible that the mom can actually hear every now and then. In the dying, hearing is usually the last to go. Hearing her daughter receive the bad news and react distressed might also cause some distress to the dying mother. In many studies on dying people, the two major concerns are what will happen to me after I die and what will happen to my loved ones. Concern for a loved one, the family member, comes first before concerns about self, pain, discomfort, suffering, while dying. And then the providers deliver the bad news, your mom will die. Viewers would react and say, this is very difficult to say. I don't know if I can say such statement. Clearly, this is much harder than saying you have a disease like cancer that might kill you. This news says your loved one, your own mother, is most likely going to die. Using our medical science and technology, this is as far as we can go. The situation in this video is actually a little different. The mom is under hospice home care. This means sometime in the past, the mom was told medical science does not have a lot of options to offer. The mom probably said, it's okay, I understand, but I would be very happy if I can stay at home and die at home peacefully in my own house, the house which me and my deceased husband built where we had a life and raised our only daughter. If you can help me spend the remaining days of my life in comfort and help me die peacefully in my own house, I will truly appreciate it. So the discussion about the mom dying has actually happened before 
and the daughter already knew that her mom will die in a few months. Now the time has come. However, even if that is the case, providers will still say, even if we have talked about it, it's still difficult to say. The idea of death and dying itself is difficult for anyone, even for nurses, doctors, and other providers. The modern world avoids the topic of death, dying, and suffering, and is focused more on happiness, being healthy, being well. And so for most people, dying and suffering is something they'd rather not talk about. Now the two providers have to talk about death and dying and actually deliver this very distressing news to the daughter. What made it more difficult is the fact that the two providers also need to tell the daughter that it will happen very, very soon. A lot of viewers again would react to the short phrase, your mom will die in a day or two. The discussion they had with the daughter and the mom several months ago was a lot easier because death was more distant. They were talking about death happening several months later. And then the viewers will ask, can we say it in some other way? It's just so difficult to say, especially the words in a day or two. My suggestion is it's okay to use different words. However, the message and the information still needs to be clearly understood. She will die, and more than likely, it's going to happen in the next 24 to 48 hours based on our clinical findings. Certainly, the less concrete, more vague, hopefully not too poetic or figurative language, will increase the chances of the news being misunderstood. If the daughter misunderstood and didn't know that it will happen in a day or two, this will prevent her from preparing herself mentally, emotionally, existentially, and spiritually. And this will result in much more distress later on. This also makes it very difficult for the providers to prepare the daughter, to instruct her, and to plan with her. If it wasn't clear to the daughter that the instructions and plans are meant for things that would happen in the next 24 to 48 hours. Some viewers are concerned that something too concrete might not actually happen. And this is also true. So the advice is to let the daughter know that 24 to 48 hours is a good estimate based on what the providers know. This is what usually happens. However, it can happen a little later or much, much earlier than expected.